Thank you for clicking on this video. Today, we're going to check out the Luna Guitars Tattoo Short Scale Bass. How does it sound? How does it feel? Let's check it out. So this is a short scale bass from Luna Guitars. It features a 30 inch scale measured from saddle to nut. It takes its visual inspiration from a precision bass, but it's actually quite different from a traditional P. This one features a mahogany body, bolt-on maple neck, but it has a walnut fingerboard. One of the selling features of this bass is the tattoo design that is laser etched into the top wood of the body. I think it looks pretty cool. And as I understand it, the artist who created this uh, design took inspiration from Polynesian body ornamentation. So the electronics on this bass are a precision style pickup, master volume, master tone. It has a fender style bent metal bridge with 19 millimeter string spacing. But unlike a fender, this one has a tilt back headstock and smaller tuners. Well, let's check out how this Luna tattoo bass sounds. Let's start with the volume all the way up and the tone knob all the way down. Let's roll the tone up, up to about 25%. Roll the tone up up to about 50%. Now let's roll that tone knob all the way up, 100%, wide open. All right, well, let's now hear this Luna short scale bass in the context of a drum track and we'll see how these different sounds sit in with the drums. We're gonna have four passes for this track. In the first one, we'll have the tone knob at 0%. In the second, we'll have the tone knob at 25%. In the third, tone knob at 50. And then the fourth pass, we'll have the tone knob wide open at 100%. In this demonstration, I'm using the stock strings, which according to the Luna website are the Dario short scale XL nickel round wheel. All right, let's hear how it sounds.
hope you enjoyed that playing example. Please let me know what you thought of the tones by leaving a comment below. All right, my assessment. Let's first talk about the good things and the things I like about this bass. First of all, I think it looks pretty cool. And unlike the market that is currently flooded with Fender copies or Fender style instruments, this has created its own unique look. So if you are looking to have an instrument that kind of stands out and doesn't look like a Fender, then you might want to check this out. I think the tattoo artwork looks very artistic, it's very cool, uh, and I like the kind of circular pattern of it. Other things I like. I like that this kind of goes away from more uh, commonly used body woods. This uses mahogany, very common in the electric guitar world, but you don't see that many mahogany body, solid body bass instruments, unfortunately. So again, much like the appearance, if you're looking for something slightly off the beaten path, then mahogany body. Similarly, the fingerboard is made out of walnut. So that's again, slightly off the beaten path. Now in terms of whether or not the walnut fingerboard makes a sonic difference at all, hard to say. But what I will say is the color is quite a bit paler than what I'm used to in the non-maple fingerboard. So in comparison to Rosewood and even Palfero, it's quite a bit paler and lighter in color. This neck is quite comfortable to play. Right out of the box, uh, I felt the profile kind of fit my hand really, really well. And one thing I do want to comment on is the profile is slightly rounder at the bottom frets, but it kind of flattens out as you get closer to the 12th fret in this area here. There is a benefit to having this profile shift in your neck. When you're playing uh, in the lower uh, fret range and you're you know, grooving and playing bass lines, then having a slightly more substantial neck to grab onto can be a good thing. However, if you're trying to play solos, chords, or if you're shredding up here in the higher frets, then having a slightly flatter profile up here does allow uh, more fingering ease when you're playing up top. So that's a good thing. This bass is very lightweight and it comes in weighing just a hair under seven pounds. So it's very, very lightweight, easy on the back. Now, sometimes with a very lightweight bass, it tends to be more neck heavy because the body is so light, but that is not the case with this Luna. It actually sits quite comfortably on my thigh and it balances quite well. And it doesn't have a, a pronounced neck dive that some Mustang style basses tend to have. Now, part of it is the weight of the body, but I think the other part of it is having smaller tuners. So unlike the larger uh, Fender style open gear tuners, these are smaller and lighter in weight. So I think that takes some of the weight away from the headstock and allows for a better balance. So those are the good things and the things I like about the bass. Now let's talk about the not so good things about it. Now at time of filming, the prices for these bases are a little variable depending on where you live and where you buy from. I purchased this one from Toman uh, because I had it uh, bundled in shipping with a whole bunch of other stuff. So at time of filming, this is selling for about 180 US dollars from Toman. If you live stateside, then there are several uh, American uh, dealers out there who are selling this for closer to 200, 230 ish uh, US dollars. Uh, which is closer to what the Luna Guitars uh, website is suggesting it to be sold for as well. So at that price point, you have to compromise on something and you're either going to compromise that on setup, you're compromise that on electronics and you're compromise that in the fit and finish department. And unfortunately, this bass guitar has a few fit and finish issues. I'm gonna put up some photos here where I am demonstrating some gaps using this piece of Bristol board. Uh, this is run of the mill uh, Bristol board cardboard. But as you can tell from the pictures I'm about to show you, there are some gaps in the neck pocket. And unfortunately there are some gaps between the headstock and the tuners.
In terms of out of the box setup, this one came with an action quite a bit higher than what I would like. Now, this is again, you know, uh, unfortunately part of the price point and you cannot expect perfect setups uh, out of the box. And more importantly, this box was also shipped to me across the ocean. So some level of forgiveness there. However, after lowering the action uh, and tweaking both the neck relief and uh, adjusting the saddles, I was able to get this base playing pretty comfortably. Now the biggest weakness in this base is unfortunately the electronics. The pickup itself is a bit on the microphonic side. So if I turn the volume up, tone all the way up. Unfortunately, the pickup shells are a bit noisy and this becomes a problem if you're uh, playing a little more aggressively and, and you're actually striking the pickup shells uh, themselves, which adds to extra noise in your signal. More importantly, this pickup has a grounding issue. It's noisy. So allow me to demonstrate. I'm gonna turn the volume all the way up, tones all the way up. That's a pretty pronounced grounding noise from a humbucker pickup. Now, usually, if the base is grounded properly but uh, with a proper ground wire from underneath the bridge, if you touch the bridge or the strings, that ground noise should also go away. But that is not the case here. So I'm touching several different places of the bridge and it doesn't make any impact on that grounding noise. So something in the circuitry here is leading to a ground hum issue. Now another issue you should be aware of is the pickup placement on this particular base. Even if you just look at it visually, proportionally, this pickup is not in the middle. It's definitely favoring the bridge. And I'm gonna put up some measurements in comparison to my Fender Mustang here, which also has a P pickup. The Luna, if you measure from in between the split coils, to uh, the A or D string saddles, measures just over four and one eighth of an inch. In contrast to the fender, it's almost a whole inch closer to the neck. Why is this relevant? Pickup placement is very important for the to overall tone that is reproduced from the bass. And the closer you get to the bridge, the more nasal the sound becomes, the more strident it becomes, and the less bass it has. And that's because of the degree of string orbit and vibration uh, at the bridge compared to closer to the neck. Now, tonally, this bass gives out a very kind of harsher upper mid range, more nasally characteristic, uh, aggressive sound to it. And I think a lot of that has to do with the pickup, but I think more importantly, a lot of it has to do with the pickup placement. So with this pickup placement being closer to the bridge, it is more difficult to get kind of a rounder uh, Motown P style sound from it because the pickup is more than an inch closer to the bridge. The other thing I'll say is if you go back and listen to the playing examples, you will hear that the G string, so the high string, sounds different than the three lower strings. And I wonder whether or not that has anything to do with this kind of asymmetrical bolt pattern. So you will notice that here on on the G string side. On this side, the bolts are further away and there's a giant cutaway here in the body, which might allow for better upper access uh, for fretting and fingering uh, in the high registers. However, what I think this might have inadvertently also led to is kind of an asymmetrical bolt and um, asymmetrical contact between the body and the neck. On a bolt-on instrument, the strength of how well the body and neck are mated together has a profound impact on stability and tone. So this looks cool, but functionally, I wonder whether or not this is contributing to a weaker and different sounding G-string. But overall, 
Who is this base for? I think this base might find favor for people who are looking for a very lightweight, short scale base. And at under seven pounds, this is pretty comfortable to play and easy on the back. In terms of tonality, it might find favor in people looking for a more aggressive, barky, snarly sound uh, due to the pickup and the pickup placement. But if you're looking for kind of a rounder, pillowy tone, might need to look elsewhere. Thanks so much for watching this episode, and thanks for checking out the Luna Tattoo Short Scale Bass. Thanks so much for watching. Catch you next time. Peace.